today's video, we're in Cologne, and we are really excited to be sharing our experience with you. I'll be a short one. We had a great time. We were able to catch up with some friends and get to experience with my parents some of Western Germany. And in case you missed our latest video, we took a one and a half hour speed train from Brussels into Paris. It was our first speed train experience, but definitely not our last. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we take you with us for all the important things, like what the bathroom is like and how manageable it is with a toddler. Pressing a button. Yeah, button. I do not know what that is for. It's for my light. Oh, you're right. It's on my We then explore Paris for the first time ever and share with you what we did in one day. This is our first time in Cologne and if you've been watching our other videos, we've been traveling quite a bit with my parents. When we got there, we really wanted to just experience an afternoon and evening with them without having to worry about the live vlogging. So it was really refreshing to do that. And although we weren't able to visit every single suggestion that you guys had given us on Instagram and on YouTube, we still had an amazing time and we thought it was worthwhile sharing the places and things that we got to see in Cologne. Cologne is a really fun city and the first impression we got of it was when we were driving into the city and you could just see the huge dome there above the skyline. You could see that along with a couple of their churches and the bridges, that's how we drove in, was on a bridge. Just a beautiful city, even from a distance. After parking in the downtown area, we walked over to the chocolate factory, which honestly was right close to the downtown area, right along the river, a beautiful location. It was really fun to go inside, learn about how chocolate is made. Now this is a Lindt chocolate factory, and at first I was a little bit surprised to find out that it was Lindt because from our understanding, Lindt is Swiss made. I would have expected it to be Ritter Spohr or a different German chocolate company, but it was a very tasty experience. However, it was very crowded. Entrance to get into the chocolate factory was 11 and a half euros per person. And because we weren't exactly sure what time we'd be getting into Cologne, if we would make it before the museum closed, we just had to wait in line for a little bit, but you can skip the line and the wait, get tickets online. That probably would have saved us like 20 to 30 minutes, mm -hmm. which would have made a little bit of a difference. So a good thing to know if you're planning on visiting the chocolate factory. Now, once you go in there, first thing they do is they give you some chocolates and Willa ate hers up really quick. I actually haven't even had mine Me yet either. of that one, <laughs> but we did have some later on. And there are one, two, three, four different spots that you can get chocolate during the tour of the museum. So there's plenty of chocolate to go around and of course a gift store that you can go ahead and buy some there too. Inside the museum there are many exhibits that go into detailed information about the regions that cacao is grown, how it's harvested, the process that it goes to transportation, to manufacturing. There's even a little ecosystem where you can walk in and it's climate controlled and you can see the various types of cacao and plants that grow in these types of tropical regions. One of the fun statistics in there was like how much chocolate each country ate per person, like per capita like per average. Capita, yeah. So if you didn't know, Switzerland takes the cake for having the most chocolate per capita eaten out of the entire world with Germany and the US, I think, coming mm -hmm. in. Mm -mm. Germany was second and then Finland was third. The US out of even the top 10 wasn't even on there. I specifically mm -hmm. looked to see and I was, I guess, a little surprised to see that, but I mean, all of them, <laughs> I think, were in Europe. So that was fun to see. After those exhibits, you walk into a very large room where you can see chocolate actually being made. And this was really fun because they had videos of what happens to the cacao and step-by-step -step process. It was really fun to see what ingredients are included into the this chocolate making process and how the cacao beans are crushed up, ground together, and then like cooled down, reheated again. You know, I mean, there it was just a really fun process. And then after you get your second experience of tasting chocolate by going in the line and then seeing the chocolate go into the lint molds. <laughs> getting shaken up, twisted a little bit, and then cooled down, and then after that getting hammered out so they fell out. And after that process, there is a very slow machine that will get one piece of chocolate once you push a button. Unfortunately, we stood in this line for a long time and we just thought, you know, the line was going slow, everyone was seeing how the chocolate was being made, but in actuality, everyone was just waiting for their one square of chocolate and it just was so slow. We ended up spending quite a lot of time just standing there. After, right around the corner, there was a chocolate fountain and there was a worker with vanilla wafers dipping it into the chocolate fountain, which was 
probably better in my opinion than waiting for those other pieces of chocolate. But overall, the museum was a really good experience and in our opinion, it was a worthwhile stop. Yeah, for sure. And then when you walk out, they give you not just like one square of chocolate extra, they give you like a package of like five or six of those pieces of chocolate. It's just a fun way to end the trip. After leaving the chocolate museum, we made our way along the river past a lot of beautiful buildings, eventually leading up to the Dom or the cathedral. Now the Cologne Cathedral is the third tallest church in the world, it is quite impressive. Wow, 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 it's huge. We had great timing. It was really fun to walk in as they were playing the organ and the acoustics were amazing. The sound was just bouncing off of everything. a special moment to be in there. Yeah, this is the main attraction of Cologne. So when you think of Cologne, I mean, you can't think of the city without that. It is such an impressive building and definitely catching to the eye. At the cathedral, we met up with our German friends and it was such a wonderful experience to be able to see them. It meant a lot to us for them to drive down and spend some time with us and for us to be able to have family, meet friends here in Germany, just a really special experience. They chose a restaurant for us to go to. It was tasty, it had burritos, bowls, salads, wraps. And the only reason we're talking about our food, you're probably like, why are you sharing that? And the reason we are is because they said that these type of restaurants are kind of up and coming here in Germany. That caught us off guard just a little bit because we've grown up with these. Kind of like a Tex-Mex style, just very fresh food, highly nutritious, and a lot of different sides and toppings where you can curate your own meal to your preference. A lot of these places too are that fun mix between not quite fast food, but also not like a big sit down restaurant. They're a little bit more casual. They tend to be a quicker meal, but very light on the stomach. It was a win-win restaurant and just a fun thing to learn more about Germany, how that is up and coming. After dinner, we started to walk through some of the streets in Cologne and we happened to walk past the WDR TV station, which for many people who live in Germany, that's not a surprise. You know exactly why that's important, but we had no idea that is where Der Maus, the little TV show, has been filmed. And we've had so many people recommend us. In fact, Recently, we had someone send us the English version, so mm -hmm. we'll likely watch that one of these weeks. Yes, we've heard that this TV show is similar to what Sesame Street is to the USA. So it's like a learning type of a show. Obviously, we haven't watched it like Tanner says, but we're all about that, like a learning show for kids, and it really seems to be a fan favorite here in Germany. Then after we walked past the TV station, we made it to 4711, which to us is just an ordinary number. We had no idea what it was stood for, but if you are into cologne, not just the city, but the actual type of perfume, cologne, then it makes total sense what that number is. We had this big epiphany. I know this is us just probably not thinking outside the box, but we didn't realize that cologne, the perfume, was named after the city Cologne. And it, I mean, it totally makes sense, but we just really didn't, I guess, connect mm -hmm. those dots there. We walked through one of the little stores, you got to see the different types and smell some of them. And man, one of them was just so powerful. It was like, really strong. I, of course, like any perfume, if you smell just like a really big whiff, it can be overpowering, but still fun to see something that is iconic to Cologne and to Germany. Our German friend gave an example and she said, it's basically like the John Doe of names. Like when people say this number, they know exactly what you're talking about. So that was just fun to learn about and to smell that original smell. Honestly, it took me back to like my grandma's perfume. Sorry if you're watching this grandma. Just aged, I guess, a little bit. Like you can tell it's been around for a while. And favorite smells now just are far different than what they were back then. Oh, right there. And with it? Yeah. By this point, we had made a full circle back to the cathedral and underneath you can go down the stairs and see remnants of the Roman wall that was there. Pretty neat to see that it's been preserved and they say even now if they come across construction sites that have remains, they try to preserve those as best as they can. Then next to the cathedral is the Roman Museum, which has a lot of interesting artifacts and things to see. We've heard it's very popular among kids as well. And popular to kids, meaning that almost every German kid has done some sort of school experience 
excursion here to come and tour, learn about the history. So it seems like it's really just a part of the curriculum, at least if you live in the west side of Germany, that's gonna be a school day trip there to that museum. After that, we made our way back to the waterfront and witnessed some incredible views. We weren't alone in doing this. There were a lot of other people just relaxing, sitting down, taking in the views and the environment. Doing boat tours here from Cologne is a popular activity and a great way to see the city. We saw the boat that takes people on these tours. It just wasn't running when we were there, but we can imagine that being a really fun experience. And we even heard that a couple weeks ago, there was this big fireworks show and you could do a boat ride while seeing those fireworks on the water. That sounds like an amazing bucket list experience that I would totally love. And finally, the most common suggestion that we had from you guys was to visit a Brauhaus. We didn't get a chance to do that this time, but we saw many of them walking through. We've heard that they have great food, of course, great beer if you're into that but we'll have to save that for another time. Overall, an amazing time in Cologne. We see why many people have recommended that we visit there, and we're definitely happy that we're able to do that, especially during the summer. Now we're taking you to Bonn as we're starting our day at the Haribo Gummy Outlet Store. Well, we finally made it to the most iconic place to visit here in Bonn. Okay, maybe not the most iconic, but the one that we have time to visit and we've been looking forward to. Haribo. Should you go inside? Let's go. It's gonna be big. Because I'm gummies. Oh yeah, the first <laughs> one. Literally, we're in trouble. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, why don't you put those back? That's why I'm at the gummy school. Okay, let's go. Because I'm at the gummy school. Yeah, we're gonna look at them. Wow, there are so many aisles here, and I'm ready to go look through some. Fantasia. Smells like lemon. What are you smelling? I'm gummy. I can eat it because I'm gummy. Ooh, I can eat them when we get out. <laughs> So we ended up with a small assortment box that was three euro twenty cents, Fantasia gummies, and some sour crocodiles. And murder sport chocolate. Did you see the choo-choo train? Where are we going with that? Ready for a snack? Yeah. What do you have in your bag? Some gummies and some goo gummies. Oh my gummies are this. Oh wow. Can we share some together? Yeah, share some together. Well we made it up to the castle here and it's pretty incredible the view from up top. Honestly, this is a very well maintained castle. Daddy. It definitely has that hunter Daddy. feel. I'm gonna open it. You're gonna open it? <laughs> Ooh, so what I... color of the alligator is that? The what was the a worm? I saw my foreman. Yeah, way to take small bites. Finally being able to taste some of our Haribo snacks that we got. Some of our gummies, huh? That was a really fun store that we went to. Yeah, these gummy candies are really <laughs> unique. A lot of them are really fun. Not too far away, we were able to make the drive up to here. And the views are pretty incredible from up top. <laughs> oh, really? This is gummies. Can I have some? Yeah, I'm my one. Honestly, the castle had a hunter's feel, lots of antlers, and bear hides and such, but pretty classy. Tons of wallpaper, just a different era than what's today. We're just really enjoying it. There's a lot of old big trees out here. Today's finally cooled down. The last five days we've had like 30 to 35 degrees and today it was overcast for the most of the morning. Did you just lick that? I did do lick at that. And then, yeah, you can eat it now. <laughs> Overall, a fun stop to see over the valley, the River Rhine. Well, we're ending out this video here in Würzburg to a sunset that is breathtaking. We just finished dinner, we have some gelato, and we're walking back to our hotel for the night.
It's been an incredible time the last few days exploring Cologne, Bonn, and then now here in Würzburg. Unfortunately, the time with my parents is coming to an end, but we've made some great memories, given them the opportunity to see lots of Germany and the surrounding countries at the same time. It's been fun having them, and we've really missed them. For us, it was fun seeing other parts of Germany, especially the western half and along the Rhine. We took some extra detours to make sure we traveled along the Rhine for a little while, and absolutely breathtaking. We see why it is a very popular place to visit. Thanks again for being here. As always, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. If you've enjoyed this video, we really appreciate everyone being here and developing the community that we have. Thanks. See ya.